Well hello again everybody and welcome to today's Word at One and we're continuing in Mark and uh, with the section, the, the series of uh, little devotionals that came from Ray Steadman Ministries and today it's Joyce who's going to be reading the scripture and the devotional for us and Joyce is reading out Mark 10 uh, verses 13 to 31 and today's devotional is entitled The Plight of the Overprivileged and it talks um, about affluence and you know money itself isn't the problem it's our attitude to these things and one of the things that I like about this uh, portion of scripture is it's another example of, of many examples where Jesus just looks right to the heart of what's going on in people's uh, lives and attitudes it's not it's not all on the outside what people present and you know Jesus can just see right to the heart of the of the situation and sometimes he would answer people's questions with strange remarks but it was it was not necessarily an answer to their question but it was just cutting right to the heart of what was really going on with them and um, thank you Jesus that you know us as well as that you know us inside out you know what's going on in our hearts Lord and um, that's just great and so I'm going to leave you with Joyce and uh, just to say for the those folks that are part of our church family there's still plenty of gaps um, in this if you'd like to take a turn at recording um, it's open to all of our church family, not not certain individuals. So please um, give us a shout and we can allocate you a, a day to do the readings. So um, God bless you today and we'll see you the next time. Bye for now. Hello there. Welcome to Word at One. And today it's called The Plight of the Overprivileged. And I'm reading from Mark chapter 10 verses 13 to 31. One day some parents brought their children to Jesus so he could touch them and bless them. But the disciples told them not to bother him. But when Jesus saw what was happening, he was very displeased with his disciples. He said to them, Let the children come to me, don't stop them, for the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. I assure you, anyone who doesn't have their kind of faith will never get into the kingdom of God. Then he took the children into his arms and placed his hands on their head and blessed them. Verse 17, the rich man. As he was starting out on a trip, a man came running up to Jesus and knelt down and asked, Good teacher, what should I do to have eternal life? Why do you call me good? Jesus asked. Only God is truly good. But as for your question, you know the commandments. Do not murder. Do not commit adultery. Do not steal. Do not testify falsely. Do not cheat. Honour your father and mother. Teacher, the man replied, I've obeyed all these commandments since I was a child. Jesus felt genuine love for this man as he looked at him. You lack only one thing, he's told him. Go and sell all you have and give the money to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come and follow me. At this, the man's face fell and he went away sadly because he had many possessions. Jesus looked around and said to his disciples, How hard it is for rich people to get into the kingdom of God. This amazed them. But Jesus said again, Dear children, it is very hard to get into the kingdom of God. It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich person to enter the kingdom of God. The disciples were astounded. Then who in the world can be saved, they asked. Jesus looked at them intently and said, Humanly speaking, it is impossible, but not with God. Everything is possible with God. Then Peter began to mention all that he and the other disciples had left behind. We've given up everything to follow you, he said. And Jesus replied, I assure you that everyone who has given up house 
or brothers or sisters, or mother or father, or children or property for my sake and for the good news, will receive now in return a hundred times over houses, brothers, sisters, mothers, children, and property with persecutions. And in the world to come, they will have eternal life. But many who seem to be important now will be the least important then, and those who are considered least here will be the greatest then. Amen. And the devotion that goes with that is called The Plight of the Overprivileged. And the key verse is Mark 10, verse 25. It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. This is a remarkable statement that Jesus makes. In it, he highlights <clears throat> Excuse me. He highlights the terrible danger of affluence. This, he says, did horrible things to the soul. Most of us, if not openly, then at least secretly, are envious of rich people. We wish we had money, and yet, if we really understood what Jesus is saying, we wouldn't feel that way. <clears throat> we would feel sorry for the people with lots of money. We think them overprivileged. Jesus says they are underprivileged. They are deprived people. There is so much they are robbed of by the things they have. So Jesus go goes on to point out the terrible danger of affluence. It is impossible, he says, for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. Let's not minimise his language here. Some commentators attempt to soften this by explaining the eye of a needle refers to a tiny gate about four feet high located in the wall of Jerusalem and that by squirming and wriggling a camel could conceivably get through it. I don't see much evidence to support that view. I think Jesus meant a literal needle. Try to imagine a huge, humpy camel trying to squeeze through a needle's eye. Jesus is saying to them, this is impossible. Why is it impossible? It's clear from the context that riches tend to destroy the qualities you must have in order to enter the kingdom of God. They destroy the childlikeness of life. Affluence creates a concern for secondary values. Rich people aren't worried about where their next meal's coming from. They worry about what it'll taste like. They're not concerned about whether they worship God rightly, but whether they're in a beautiful building. Riches transfer their concern from the necessary, from the necessary things to secondary. Furthermore, Affluence destroys teachability because it creates a false sense of power and authority. <clears throat> Those who have power because of their money begin to feel that they ought to be the teacher. They do not need to learn. They already know everything. This makes for arrogance, indifference and for insensitivity to the needs of others, for isolation and for a lack of concern. Finally, affluence gradually enslaves those who are attached to it. It builds an increasing dependence upon comfort, upon the good life, until people reach a point where they cannot give it up. They're owned by their possessions. Like to a habit-forming drug, they become addicted to things, addicted to comfort and ease. Therefore, it destroys the responsive spirit that is ready and willing to follow truth whenever it's revealed. That is why Jesus said it's impossible with people, but not with God. This is the note of grace. God can break that enslavement in riches. Sorry, God can break that enslavement to riches. Isn't it interesting that if a rich man does come to Christ, 
he or she must come in exactly the same way as the poorest bum on Skid Row. Rich people have to acknowledge their complete and utter need and come as guilty sinners, wretched and miserable, and receive the gift of life at the hands of Jesus from the cross. There's no other way. Lord, let me be ready to give up my possessions and put them back into your hands. And the wee life application to this is, are we alert to the possible corrosive effect of being owned by our possessions? Is our attitude one of ready willingness to give them up and back into his hands? Let's pray. I thank you, Father, that we're all the same to you. Lord, there are no rich or poor, but saved and unsaved. And Lord, you receive us just as we are. I thank you, Father, that you sent Jesus to die on the cross for each one of us. And there's no one better than another. Lord, we're all your children when we come to the cross and commit our lives to you. And I thank you for that, Lord. Amen. <laughs>